All right, Coach, they're all yours. Uh, thanks for attending tonight, guys and uh, gals from Northwest Ohio District 7 Basketball Coaches Clinic. We are more than fortunate, um, extremely lucky to have Coach Matt Bullent here with us tonight. Uh, Coach Bullent is only the ninth head women's basketball coach in Eastern Illinois University's history, and he's entering his seventh season at Eastern Illinois. He's coached um, last year's team to a 21-8 and eight record, and in the mid-major pool, they, they reached the top 25. This is this past season was Coach Bullen's eleventh twenty plus win season as a head coach, and um, Matt and I were talking earlier, and uh, there was a group of co coaches uh, together earlier today, and we could not think of another university that has a better boys and girls basketball coaching staff or men's and women's. Then Eastern Illinois with Coach Bullent on the girls' side and uh, Marty Simmons on the boys' side. So, Coach, we really appreciate you coming and talking to us. Absolutely. Excited to do it. And I feel like I have a topic that could really help coaches. Um, you know, we we, uh, we were just talking, uh, Derek and I, with uh, Coach Bennett. Uh, I uh, worked for Kathy Bennett for five years, followed Dick, knew Tony, and uh, when I was at Green Bay my first year, we played 100% man. And I knew I wasn't going to be able to teach it as well as them. And there was just times that we needed a change of pace and needed something different. Uh, our last game, Cleveland State was making threes and um, and they're running a five out motion that was really good. And it would have been better if we had something to change it up. And so that offseason, uh, I hired a guy named Mike DeVillibus, and he came, and I, I was talking about playing a matchup zone. And he said, well, I've got this defense I ran called the Buzz. I, I learned it from um, a guy out in California, um, Russ Davis. And so uh, I started looking into it, and we put it in, and it absolutely helped us at Green Bay. In fact, I don't know that we had won games in the NCAA tournament my last three years. We won games three years in a row. Uh, we played Virginia, and Monica Wright scored 12 points in the first three minutes, and we were struggling to guard her in May, and we went to buzz and trapped her everywhere she was, and it changed that game. And then the next year, we made the Sweet 16 um, and beat Little Rock and Michigan State. Uh, and then the, the following year, we beat Iowa State and, and lost a heartbreaker to Kentucky um, to go to the Sweet 16 in back-to-back -back years. And as a mid-major, it's really hard to make the NCAA tournament, certainly hard to win games. And we really had a chance three years in a row. We were a basket away from being in the Sweet 16 three, three consecutive years, and the buzz was a big part of that. And I know at the high school level, you think, well, you, you don't have, you don't get to recruit kids that fit the buzz, or you, um, you know, you have different, you have kids that you may have to cover up that aren't great defenders. Um, but my, uh, the high school coach here in town in Charleston uh, wanted to put it in. And my daughter, Reagan, was a junior, and they lost to Effingham three times that year. Uh, Effingham was really good. Charleston was really good as well. And then he put it in the next year. Now, uh, Effingham returned their top seven players and were ranked as one of the top teams in the state. And he lost two good players. Now, they had my daughter, Reagan, and they had uh, Shea Lilford, who's a really good player. And he put it in, and they beat Effingham three times the next year. They went from losing three to them to winning three. And honestly, their talent wasn't as good. Um, but the buzz absolutely changed them. And for a high school coach, I just feel like it's such a good change of pace. And uh, it's something that it's very similar to the one three one with concepts. You're trying to get them to throw the ball over the top and, you know, move while the ball's in the air. You're trying to speed them up. The one thing I like better about the one three one, if you do it well, uh, you can get pressure on the ball. And in the one three one, a lot of times when the ball is on the wing, there's not a lot of pressure and there's not really, not really speeding up the guards. Um, but here, I feel like if you pressure the ball, you can get them to sped up and you can get them to make a pass they shouldn't throw it too high, too low, and uh, you can create turnovers. Um, and I, I've seen it work against really good guards. Kelsey Mitchell, who was at Ohio State and is now with the Indiana Fever, her first time playing against it, she had 10 turnovers. She probably never had 10 turnovers in a game in her life. Um, but I've seen it against you know WNBA quality guards, uh, speed them up and, and really work. Uh, and I always use this example. Now, we played Iowa State my last year, and Bill Friendly's team is known for kids that can pass and shoot and really take care of the ball. If they turn it over at all, he's ticked. And and they turned it over 31 times. We were up 19 at half, um, ended up winning the game. You know, we were up 20 most of the second half. And then we played Kentucky, who was completely different, raw and athletic and fast. And we were, we didn't run it. We should have run it more in the first half. We were down 16 
And then we ran it pretty much exclusively in the second half. And we came back and took the lead and had a one point lead with a few seconds left. And they made a shot in the last 10 seconds to, to give them the lead back. But uh, two totally different teams two you know, top 25 teams, one really athletic. And, and you think the buzz would be perfect against Kentucky and not work against a skilled, smart uh, shooting team like Iowa State. And it worked really well against both teams. So again, the concept, and we're going to show you some clips here in a little bit, so that'll kind of help. And then if you want to ask questions after the clips, but the concept is a, a two, one, two, um, similar to the one, three, one. And now we do some where we go one, one, three as well. And just to give them a look, different look, make it look like man. Uh, and, uh, and I think that's been effective. Um, and I, I like it for short periods of time, um, you know, to have it usually uh, when we do it well, uh, it works the first possession um, and we get a good result. And then, you know, the art is how long to stay in, you know, in it. And uh, we do do some two, two, one back to it. Uh, I think one of the advantages of the two, two, one is they'll break the press and then they're not always in a good spot to, to attack the buzz. Um, and so we will use that, especially this year, we've got uh, quicker, more athletic guards. We did not, I'll be honest, we didn't use it a ton last year. We didn't really have the personnel and uh, we didn't really get the, you got to be confident in it and aggressive in it. Um, and I think this year we've got a better personnel and we've got more returners that will be confident in it. So I think we'll be more effective uh, in it this year. Um, so uh, if, in just going through the personnel, the most important spot is the if you're facing the court is the front left. Most teams are going to attack the defense, dribbling the ball up the right side of the court. So what I'm saying front left, I'm saying when they bring the ball down the right side of the court. So that front person is the most important person. We had a girl at, at Green Bay, Celeste, who was like 5'7", and she could play anywhere. She was just athletic and tough and smart. And so we started moving her around to kind of see which spot, you know, it would be best. Um, and we found that that front left, when she was in the front left, pressuring the ball and speeding them up, it made such a difference. And I'll be honest, you know, here last year, we weren't as good in that front left spot. We just didn't have that person that was great at that. Our starting point guard, Maya, is a really good basketball player, but she is not incredibly athletic and, you know, doesn't doesn't do great pressure on the ball. Um, and so I think this year we're going to be able to play her not in that spot and put her um, at the other spot. And I think that will really help us. Uh, but then, the, yeah, the two um, is an important spot as well. I do say, hey, I know sometimes you've got a shooter that you kind of have to hide. You can put them in that spot or you could put them in one of the forward spots. The one thing about the two bottom spots, the three, four, five, is they're going to have to rebound out of those spots. And if, so if you put a two guard there who is not very physical, that can be a challenge. And if coaches are smart, they will try to post up that weak side. And so we call that wedging where they're kind of fronting and bearing them. Um, if you put a kid that's not real aggressive, not real physical, that can be a tough, tougher spot. So I think if you've got a, a two guard that's not very big and maybe a kid that shoots it well, but it, it's not that athletic, I would put them, um, if you're, again, facing the court, um, I would put them in the front right. Most teams attack it on the right side, so they're going to be, they're not going to be as responsible to start the defense uh, in that Um so that's kind of, and then the three, uh, four, five, the five is just someone that's kind of in, in front of the ball. Uh, we I've had six, three kids that are a little bit slow in that spot. And I've had at, at Green Bay, we had a six foot kid who had really good feet. Um, and that worked out really well. Uh, now she was willing to take charges in it and could kind of see and, and, and helped us there. Um, so it, that spot, the five's got to be able to move. I have tried to use I, we had this, at Illinois, we had two, six, three kids, and one of them was a little bit slow. And we tried playing her in the middle, and we tried to play her on the outside. And I found that it was a little bit better if you've got a slower five to put them in the middle and kind of clog it up. Because on the outside, um, they're going to have to affect a skip and they're going to have to take, um, you know, guard the three point line. And it's not ideal if they're getting beat baseline uh, a lot. And if they're slower, that, that's probably a little bit more challenging. Um, I do think you can play it when you're smaller. Um, obviously the longer any kind of one three one or any kind of trap the longer more athletic you are the easier it is but my first uh two years here we were incredibly small and we looked like a, a bad division three team um and we ran it and it actually helped us you know stay in some games um but again the longer you are the more athletic you are anytime you're doing a trap obviously that helps but you can run it with small you just have to fly around and you have to play aggressively and anytime you pressure the ball you know, if you're a little bit smaller, if you're willing to get into them and be aggressive, then you can create some things that you want. Um, and so that's kind of an overview of, of the spots and uh, in it. Um, 
again, if they come down the, the right side, we're going to put our best defender in that front spot. We're going to try to pick you up. And then we, we call that a point stance where we'd guard it one-on-one -on -one, um, if they're coming down the, the right side. And we're trying to pick the ball up. We're trying to pressure you. We're trying to point it to the sideline or, you know, not straight line drive. It's kind of the reason we call it point is, is point the ball to where we want it to go and don't give up a straight line drive. Uh, but you can be aggressive in it too. I mean, if they get by, there's three people waiting for them. Um, and so it, it's, you know, they, they can back tap it there. Some, I'm not a big fan of that man to man defense and kids like to do that, but in, in the buzz, you know, that's something, uh, you can do is have the kid get to a side and reach behind and get a tip, especially maybe late in the game, you're having to get a steal or you need a momentum change. Uh, sometimes we, and you'll show that in one of the clips, you'll see our kid, one of our kids doing that. Um, again, we don't spend a lot of time trying to teach that because we don't want them doing that in our man. Uh, but it is something of buzz. They can be aggressive, fly around and go for steals. And it's probably one of the dangers of it. Our Green Bay team loved it so much. They'd rather play that than man. Um, and because it's more fun to play and you can fly around, there's not as many mistakes uh, in it. And so um, it is a fun defense to play, especially when they're flying around and creating steals. Um, and then uh, if the ball's in the middle, then we'll call that a funnel stance. And, and Kayla Tetchlog, who's the head coach at Kayla Carius now, is the head coach of South Dakota. We were, I was doing a clinic one time, and she said, just tell them, to, and when the ball to the middle, they're going to funnel the ball to me. And so we're thinking about a funnel and trying to push the point guard towards the five and you know have enough pressure on them that they're not comfortable, um, again, and trying to try to speed them up. Um, so the ball's in the middle, we're funneling. And then if it goes to the opposite side, we're pointing it on that side. Um, but let's do the clips here. Um, it's probably easier if you're seeing it and then I'll kind of talk through them. And then if you guys want to ask questions, um, uh, we can do that at, at the end, um, again, and I'll give you my cell phone. If you put it in and you have questions or ways that I can help you, there is a video by championship video that our team did last year at a coach's clinic, um, that shows the sprints and shows a little more breakdown. Um, that would be helpful, but I, I'd love to help you be able to run it. Uh, I think it can really help a high school basketball team. It, it's helped uh, us here at Eastern. It helped us at Illinois. It definitely helped us at Green Bay uh, as well. So here uh, we'll share the screen here and uh, and show you. And I um, just watching the clips, I felt like our Green Bay team probably played it better, played it harder. Um, and we're going to play it harder and better this year. Uh, I don't watch these clips with, with incredible pride. Uh, we weren't great at it last year. Uh, two years ago, it, we were probably better because we had a kid that graduated that played the front left. Um, so, uh, you know, we missed that spot a little bit. That front left spot's important. And again, I don't think that kid has to be that big. Uh, Celeste, who was so good at it, was 5'6", five, 5'7", five, but she was kind of tenacious and, and kind of a bulldog and, and would get after it. So we're working on trying to share this screen here. Hopefully this will work. Our, sometimes our technology here at Eastern, they make things a little bit tougher than. Is there any general, while we're trying to do this, is there any general questions I can cover while we're sharing this? How far up do you lift your uh, A and B guards? Yeah, so that, that's a good question. Um, we I like to start it aggressively. Uh, so we'll ideally pick it up near half court. Um, the one thing you'll see us late in the game, if our kids are tired or we're really trying not to foul, keep you out the foul line, then maybe we'll back them up. So there's a little less ground. We'll call that buzz back and we'll just back up the guards. But I, the one thing I found is it's better to start aggressively and then back them up. than if you start passively, then sometimes it's, it's an issue to try to get them to be aggressive. So we typically try to be aggressive to start. And then again, sometimes late in the game, um, they're in the bonus and, you know, and they have one kid that really wants to penetrate and you know how late in the game, a team will get down one and their kid's just going to put their head down and drive it. It's perfect for that situation. If you do it well, you should not be able to penetrate uh, against it. Do you, um, so when you have your A and B guards and they're in a, um, side by side versus the tandem. Yep. If the, do you ever have the girl who has on ball responsibility, drop her inside foot and funnel the ball to the middle um yeah sometimes uh depending on the kid uh, we may say hey, let's push it a little bit more middle or um there's times when i'll uh i'll say hey this kid's really trying to dribble here to pass where i'll say you know let's not trap it as much let's try to point it a little bit longer um 
or maybe even on that wing. It's kind of a gray area when they throw it to the wing. When it's near the three-point line, we'll come and trap it, and we'll be aggressive as it gets up a little bit higher. That's kind of a sometimes we trap, sometimes we don't area. And it's an area where we'll say, hey, as, as much as you can point it here, if we can pressure the ball and force a pass without trapping it, you know, then we're now we're in pretty good situations to try to steal the pass and and get in, and get in those situations. So it's, the ball goes to the corner. Yeah. Does the center take that? Yes. So that we call we'll call that fire in that situation. Um, and then the center will come in and take that. Uh, and now um, we'll say, yeah, maybe we'll trap that. But mm -hmm. the amount of times that it gets the corner and they hold it isn't very often. But really, we're making sure the five has got to be in front of the ball so they can't drive it out of the corner. And then if they've got a three-point shooter, that's something that we'll scout a little bit. You know, most people are going to put at least one shooter in the corner and then trying to get our five to anticipate that and get to that shot. Um, and that's probably one of the challenges if you've got a slow five is, hey, you've got to be able to cover the corner when they put a three-point shooter in there and probably just repping that and giving her some opportunities to practice that. Sure. So when the ball goes to the corner – does the weak side forward uh, take the strong side post or block? I yes. Should... Yes. So the weak side forward is going to come all the way across to that block. And so uh, that's a good question. So that's one of the reasons we call fire is we're saying, hey, our five is going to cover the corner. You've got to come across. And, and that's one of the reasons we call it out. So you know that hey, we got to come across. Gotcha. So Marcus is trying to switch computers here to get his because mine was having issues. So we're trying to switch to uh, be able to share the screen. But yeah, so we'll call fire when it goes to the corner. Five will cover it. And then uh, the weak side forward will come across to, to guard it. Okay, so when the uh, weak side forward takes the strong side block, who drops down, who covers down on the weak side? Yeah, so the weak side guard then. Um, okay. We'll take that. And uh, ideally, uh, you know, if we're skipping the ball, we want the ball to be in the air for a while and right. hope that they're able to, to get back. Um, but we are we're going to take away strong side first mm -hmm. and be aggressive with that uh, so that we ha we kind of force a skip. And the one thing we say when the ball's on the wing, we'll tie the bottom forward. We're saying, hey, try to cheat up. If you can steal a skip, you kind of change the game because Absolutely. now the coach coach is saying, hey, don't skip the ball. Right. And if you don't skip it, you know, it's a hard defense to play against. Um, and so that's a, a, one of the things we talk a lot about is, hey, if you're a forward and you can see the skip, go after that, steal it. Not only do we get a layup, but that kid's probably not throwing another skip pass the rest of the game. And their coach may tell their whole team, hey, don't skip it. And this defense, you know, when you don't skip it, it, is really hard to play against. Right. So um, it kind of has a lot of, of uh, one, two, two or three, two zone slides in it. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And again, similar to the one through one, as far as you're trying to play passing lanes, we're trying to sprint to spots, um, not necessarily sprint to a person, but sprint to a passing lane so that you've got to throw the ball over the top. And then while the ball's in the air, now we're going to be be moving. And, you know, like any good defensive team, when the ball's in the air, you should have five people moving uh, to their spots. And hopefully if we're creating lobs and the ball's in the air for any amount of time, now we're going to be able to cover the court really, really well. Um, but, yeah, good good questions. The uh, So when, when the, the ball is a, uh, above – foul line extended do you have the the person you designate uh, when the zone's in its first alignment so your center before everything shifted do they play top side low side or full front yeah they'll go over the top side of that high post um because we want to run into kind of their spot we're going between them and them in the basket but if they run over the top i found it makes it much harder to throw the pass into there and we were just talking about um, you know, if the ball goes to the wing, typically that guard on top is then taking the high post. Um, and the, the one of the principles is let's try to keep it out of the high post as much as we can, because exactly. I just feel like they can break you down. Everything's one pass away once it gets to the high post. So we're just talking about, hey, maybe we should keep our five in there a little bit longer 
Uh, if the ball goes to the short corner, that's not going to hurt us as much as the high post. And, and maybe we could have the weak side forward. They, if you have, if they're kind of a tandem, we may have them switch spots this year and have our weak side forward come across and take the short corner. Again, the number of people that can catch it at short corner, shoot it quickly and make a high percentage in that shot is, is fairly small. It's more the high post and then the dump down to the post that hurts us. So we might keep our five in there a little bit longer. When it goes to the wing, the five typically is going down between the ball and the basket. Um, but we might say that this year, hey, you stay in there and, and don't let them throw it to that high post or steal that pass to the high post. Yeah, the I know in high school basketball, the uh, short corner jump shot's the lowest percentage jump shot in the game. Yeah, and I feel like at our level too, I, you know, I don't know, we've got uh, our five can actually, sh you know, shoots it fairly well, but I think I've had maybe one kid in 20 years where I'd say, yeah, we want that shot and want it a lot. You know, most of the time, that's not a great shot, and you're usually going to be going after the rebound after they're shooting that shot. So when the ball go goes to the short corner and the person at the high post rolls down to the basket, you know, America's zone play? Yep. Yeah. So typically what we would do then is the five would take the short corner and then the opposite four would come come across. Now, when the fives guard in the short corner there, they're going to be ultra aggressive. Yes. And we're telling them pressure the ball. Don't let them see. Don't let them skip. And, you know, if you get a foul there being aggressive, pressuring the ball, we'll be fine with that. Yeah, that's exactly how we did it as well. Um, we we always were kind of in, in a juxtaposition. We we didn't know if we wanted the the B guard who was sitting on that high postman to ride them down there and get a hand yeah. in the line. Or and we'll say wedge them is what we you say. Hey, kind of push them down. We don't want them staying there. Like, you know, try to push them down towards that five if you can while right. they're while they're into that high post. And that's something obviously we practice is having the guards sprint to those spots and, and keep it out of the high post. Um, but one of the things we'll say is just because it gets in the high post doesn't mean it has to score. If we can fly around and play out of it, you know, take away the inside first. If it does get thrown to the high post and the, the bottom forwards are kind of pinching inside together, um, and we're trying to make them throw it out um, instead of throwing it obviously inside for a layup. Right. Okay. So I think we got this ready to go. Sorry, it's taking, taking a little bit of problem. Uh, so this is uh, at home here. Um, and this is this is one of our uh, better possessions. Uh, again, we're we're one one here where we're trying to pressure it, and then when it goes to that thing, we're going to trap it. Guards coming to take the high post, and then we end up get, getting getting a tip and a, and a steal. And there you could see some decent ball pressure. Um, one thing here, the the five should be a little bit higher. Um, our fives last year didn't always come. When the ball's on top, the five should be coming up to the free throw line and trying to keep it out of the high post when the ball's up top uh, and then sprinting sprinting to their spot. But the, yeah, the one thing you, you'll get, you'll get them to speed up and um, take a lot of threes and a lot of the threes will come out to the weak side. So we try to tell the guards, you know, hey, let's get to the weak side boards, especially the weak side guard. We got to get you over there. And then the strong side guard will say, hey, sprint, you know, as far as you can try to get to the weak side. You're not going to get all the weak side, but maybe you'll get to the middle and get a long rebound. We do get a ton of long rebounds. And I feel like you can run out of those long rebounds um, because people, you speed them up. They take threes faster than they should. And they miss a lot of those threes long. So here's the one one uh, alignment. So they're going four across, and then, you know, we're trying to take away that high post right away and, and read that. And and Kyra, she was here two years ago. Number one was good in this. And we missed her last year, uh, just her ability to pressure the ball and, and kind of anticipate. But here we're back to a, a two guard. Our five should be a little bit higher there. And then we should be now, this is against Tennessee State. So we're scouting here and realize that that first kid couldn't shoot. So we weren't running hard at her. Um, so obviously the scout, that's one thing you'll play. And I do think you could run it against shooting teams. You'd be a bit surprised that just because they can shoot and pass doesn't mean you can't run this against them. Obviously, Iowa State is a perfect example of that. We ran it twice in the NCAA tournament, and it was really effective both times. And they're as skilled and as smart as any Division I women's basketball team, uh, typically. So if you're so going here's to an example, it goes to the high post, and we're trying to pressure it with our five. And then our two forwards, you know, are trying to uh, – one, our number one here, she should be trying to get down below that – post and try to affect that guard to the wing she didn't do a very good job of it here so if that guard can get below it now we can really pinch in with the two forward spots uh here and our, our forward went out a little bit quick on the bottom there but 
um, again, created a, created a tough shot. So here's the two guard alignment. There was some one, one, and I do like mixing it up. So they get different looks there. The five should have come up and st stolen that pass. Our five is too low. They need to be more aggressive and anticipate to anticipate that shot. But there's an example of kind of a sp sped up three. That kid's not a great shooter um, that took that shot. So here's an, this is a good uh, possession from last year. Uh, we're at USI who's, you know, skilled and smart. And we do a good job flying around and play, playing aggressively. That was one of our better possessions. Again, if you can get them to play aggressive and fly around, that that's the idea of it. This is against Tennessee State, who's not a great shooting team, and, and we get a, a tip and a steal out, out of it there. Here's uh, Tennessee Tech, the you know, uh, second half here. This is the first time we ever beat them at their place, and they were the best team in our league or one of the best teams in our league last year. They're a good job of our forward anticipating and getting out. Here's a good example of kind of flying around. The ball goes to the high post. We don't really want it there, but 22 does a good job of reading and, and getting over the top of this, and then we get a steal. Our five did a good job of getting a tip and being aggressive. You can see as we play Tennessee State's the team in the white here, we're a little bit different against them because they are a penetrating team that doesn't shoot it well. So we're not quite as spread out against them. We're not really trapping as much. We're not flying around as, as wide. We're playing a little bit more conservative against this team. And we force a kind of a tough pull, pull up there. So again, I, I'd like to see our five come up and be a little more aggressive when the ball's up top. But there it goes to the high post and we guard it one-on-one. -on -one. When it goes to the high post, the five takes it and then the other two are taking, taking away the inside. There's another example of a three that's long. Um, and again, we get a lot of long rebounds. So here's Tennessee Tech second second half. So the, high, the guard's trying to take the high post, but then they're coming out to the passing lane. There are five, does a little bit better job of getting up to that high post. And we get a fairly quick three uh, from the side. I'd much rather have a three that's where the pass is made from the top to the wing than a three from the high post or short corner where they kick it out. I feel like that three is a lot tougher and we, we they shoot a much lower percentage. So there's a ball screen. We're going over, over the top of that. So here's an example of the 2-2-1. Two, two, and we're going to do a lot more of this back into it this year. We've got a lot more depth and we've got quicker guards. I think we're going to be able to do a lot more 2-2-1. Two, two, uh, again, our five needs to come up there. She's a little bit late coming up to that spot. But here's an example of the kind of the 2-1-2 two, two look of it, trying to get them to pass over the top. And then she'll point that. So there's an example. She's pointing at the ball, went back to the top. That should be a funnel. Now from that wing, that this is a spot we could trap it. If they're, they hold it on that wing, that 22 should have been a little bit higher as she comes to trap that, and we could have been a, a little bit more aggressive on that spot. Again, this is Tennessee State, who likes to penetrate, doesn't shoot it well, so we're running a little bit more conservative, probably looks a little bit more like a 2-3 uh, than an aggressive 2-1-2 two, two against that team. And again, you can change it to the scout depending on who you're playing and, and what you think they're going to do. But there's an example. Of the ball went to the wing and, and we got a trap and then a turnover out of it. One of the things I like about it is a lot of people know the one three one play. There's a back tap. You know, she got to the side, tapped it, and we get a layup, layup out of it. But a lot of people know the one three one. They have an idea how to attack that. Not many people have a good idea. And most of the time they have one plan against this. So if we can run it in the first half for a possession or two, kind of see what their plan is. And then at halftime, we talk about, you know, I'll, I'll ask them, hey, what are they trying to do? And then what adjustment do we need to make? And then when we make that adjustment, and that's an example of five. If your five will take a charge, she'll get that opportunity quite a bit. Our girl at Green Bay took a ton of that because the guards get out of control, um, get sped up. And so this is an example. And this girl will play a little bit of the five this year for us. She's not very athletic, but she is willing to take charges. 
Um, and you could see the guard gets sped up uh, here. And then hopefully we can take that charge. Yeah, so here the weak side comes over to that short corner. Our five's a little bit late. So that's what we're talking about this year, uh, maybe having that forward take that short corner a little bit more like she does here, and then maybe trapping that, and then having that guard rotate down the way she does here. <laughs> Typically, we'll do it after a made basket. Uh, there's a good example of the skip and the steal. That led to a layup, and and now that that the rest of that game, the buzz was probably really effective because they're worried about throwing the skip. We got to steal on a layup, uh, and sometimes uh, it has helped us when we're struggling to score, just not making shots. You know, sometimes you gosh, you get a steal on a layup, and that can kind of get you going a little bit. So, what questions do you have after watching those clips? How do you teach rebounding? Yeah, so basically what we'll do is, is kind of just pass out of it and then have it take a shot. Um, and, you know, just again, you're getting the weak side forward, you know, they've got to get to the back to their spot, make sure. And then the weak side guard, we'd like to get two on the weak side as much as we can. Um, and it, like any zone, probably rebounding is one of the factors of one of the things that hurts us is off offensive rebounding uh, because you're not a man on man. Um, but hopefully if we're speeding you up, we are creating some turnovers and then we're creating some bad shots. Um, but that is something, yeah, you have to address and try to get to the weak side and fly around and go after it. I will say you do get a chance to run out of it some because you get a lot of long, long rebounds where your guards are coming down with the rebound and now, you know, they're pushing the ball. And so you might get some run, run outs, uh, because of the long rebounding. Do you so that, yeah, that, that's a good question. Thank you. Uh, do you lift your your zone up higher off the baseline versus teams who have three plus shooters? Yeah, um, we, and we're we'll again talk about the skip a little bit more if they're putting shooters on that wing. Um, you know, again, the one thing I don't like is if it goes to the high post um, and then they're passing, able to really pass and see out of it. So you know, figuring out the high post, trying to keep it out of there. Um, again, if you can get five, get up there and pressure it. And then your kids anticipate out of it. Um, you know, if the ball skip from one wing to the other, hopefully, you know, we should be able to get to that three point shot. That doesn't hurt us as much as if the ball goes to high post and they pass out of, it. or if they go to a short corner and we're a little bit late and they skip it out of it. Um, probably those two are where we give up more more threes. I feel like the corner three, you give it up a little bit, but that's not an easy shot. Um, and again, if they have a great shooter there, then we're certainly going to get somebody to that spot. But a lot of times, you know, average shooters are shooting corner threes and not shooting a very good percentage. Right. So when you've got your uh, initial alignment, let's say you go 2-1-2, two, two, and the other team puts two players down on the baseline, on the blocks. Yep. And you've got your cen center uh, extended, and then you've got one wing wh where there's a really good shooter. How do you guys cover that um, so they can't make a ping pong pass, a diagonal pass to the uh, opposite block? Yeah, so um, the one thing I was going to say is they'll tell the two forwards, make sure you take away the inside first. I'd rather have you be just a second late to the three-point line than, you know, you're out there and they they get something behind us. And um, and so that's one of the advantages of the one one three is that if they've got two people on, on the baseline, now your five, if you're one, one, the second guard can take away the high post and your five can be down there and then your forwards can cheat out. So that's one of the reasons I'd like having the two different alignments is, hey, if they're putting two people on the baseline and they happen to have two shooters, we can cover that because our five is down there to start and the forwards can cheat out. And then sometimes we'll get a good trap out of the one, one, three on. They'll pitch it to that wing. Our forwards already there. Our guard should, doesn't have far to go from the high post. And sometimes we'll get a really good trap out of the one, one, three. And again, I'll tell the two bottom forwards, hey, in this alignment, you know, the five has got the block. They're not throwing to the block when the five's down there. So go ahead and be aggressive here. Let's get out to that wing. You saw the one clip where the, the forward just stole the first pass because she was anticipating that first one. 
Um, but that is a good one of the reasons why I like the change of pace. If they start putting two people, especially two bigs in the baseline that can you can throw over the top. Uh, you do can run it on the men's side as well. I don't know if we have any men's basketball coaches here, but uh, um, Ed Schilling, who's at Grand Canyon, he was the head coach at Park Tudor in Indiana and won several state championships, and he ran it a ton. And he might be a good if you're on the guy's side. I do feel like you probably need to really focus on pressuring the ball so they're not throwing over the top and obviously throwing it for lobs and trying to get dunks on the weak side. But he ran it on the men's side. And there are men's Milligan College in Tennessee. I put it in there for that coach, and he's run it and, and had success. And I know one of the first times he ran it against a ranked team, they beat him. He said there there was no chance for beating that team without the buzz. Yeah, um, Madison Plains High School, when I coached in Central Ohio, uh, they ran the heck out of it. Okay. Um, yeah, and I've done enough clinics now. There has been I've done a ton in Indiana, so there's quite mm -hmm. a few men's coaches in Indiana that are, are running it. Um, and yeah, and you've seen it, yeah, sprinkled. And I've had uh, definitely seen high school uh, boys programs run it and be successful in it. What percentage of your practice time is spent on the buzz? Yeah, it's one of the best things about it is it's it's very little practice time. Our and our teams, people would not as good as we were at Green Bay that we'd probably run it practice less than five hours the whole season. Uh, um, we want them to fly around, don't overthink it, um, and, and be aggressive. Um, you know, the one thing we'll do some buzz sprints. If you buy the video, you can see those, but you know, it will, you know, once we've run it against the team, then maybe the next time we play them, Hey, this is what they try to, this is how they hurt it in us. And that may be something as we do the scout the second time we play them to make sure we cover or, Hey, they, they like to run this against zone. It's one, four high where they're going to throw it to the high post dive the other, you know, high post. So let's, let's talk about that and let's make sure we're ready to take that away. That's another advantage of the one, one, three is that one, four high where they're trying to, you know, two people at the high post and dive the other post is that second guard can usually take away that pass to, to the high post. And I think you saw it there with somebody threw it in a, in a clip and we, and we stole that pass. Mm -hmm. So the girls team in Eastern Illinois improved by eight wins from your first season to your second and another eight wins from your second to your third season. What would you say attributed to the, uh, that? Because that's that's a lot of improvement in a short amount of time. Yeah, I'd like to say it's coaching, but it wasn't. It was better players. Okay, well, better recruiting, uh, and we got yeah, um, obviously got we got better in, in our system. Um, and I will say the year we won nineteen games, we were good in the buzz, and it helped. We were uh, played Jacksonville State in the conference tournament, and they were up ten in the fourth quarter. We ran a lot in the fourth quarter and came back to beat them uh, in that game. Um, but yeah, it it certainly has helped us, and we've run it here throughout. Uh, ran it at Illinois throughout. Uh, it really was a big part of our success at Green Bay. Um, so three different levels, you know, Big Ten and and in the NCAA tournament and and against really good teams. I know. You know, one of the things that you, you can run presses and traps against bad teams. We're not trying to beat the bad teams here. You saw it against Tennessee Tech, who's, you know, arguably the best team in our league with us in Little Rock. You know, we're trying to run a defense that's going to help us win championships. Um, and so that's why we run it. Yeah, well, uh, just watching your clips and um, I've seen your videos. Uh, it, your kids bust their butts in it. Yeah, I think. And I, I do think we can play harder than what we did last year. The one thing, it's amazing how the confidence factor, if they lose confidence in it, it's hard to get them to play as aggressively. And uh, and we need to do a better job of instilling that. And I do think we've got the personnel. We didn't really have the personnel for it last year. And and as a head coach, I think I lost a little confidence in it as, you know, we had possessions that weren't as good. Um, but I, I do think you got to play hard in it and pressure on the ball and flying around. Um, and you can get your kids to do that, especially as they get a steal and get a turnover and you're applauding that, um, you know, that you, they love to create that, and especially, um, you know, the crowd gets a little bit hyped and at home and, and creates it. And then you get a turnover and a steal and a layup. And now they're pretty excited about running it. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you can create um, 10 or 12 points of, of offense off your defense per game. That's huge, huge. Yeah. And again, that, that, that number one, that was good in it. We struggled to score a little bit that year and there's times where we uh, weren't scoring. Um, and even the year we won 19 games, uh, our offense wasn't always great. And at times we went to the two, two, one back to the buzz just to see if we could create a steal and maybe get a layup or get something in transition uh, off a long rebound. And sometimes that kind of help us get us going offensively when we're struggling to make shots. Well, I will give you guys. Hey, my... uh, oh, oh, good. Go ahead, Matt. Um, I just ha I have a couple questions here. Um, sorry, I've I've been on mute. I have a 
a puppy and she's going kind of crazy right now. But uh, when you guys are in, in uh, the side by side, do you guys ever front the high post with your five? I yeah. So you played behind. Yeah. And our fives, honestly, looking at that, we, we didn't do a good job of getting up high enough. We were too passive at, at the five. I think, um, yeah, I, I, we need to do better with that. With that five was not Abby when she played here, um, wasn't very good in it. And I was trying to make it easier for her. And that was probably a mistake as a coach because she did not work as hard as she needed to in it. Um, but yeah, so when they started the balls up high, uh, near half court, and they throw it to the wing, we'll run. If they got some of the high post, we'll, we'll go over the top of that some to keep it out of the high post. Or I think this year we're just going to tell the five, hey, stay up there a little bit more and try to anticipate the pass. When they go, you know, point to the wing, to the high post, if we see that happening, let's see if we can stay there a little bit and see if we can steal that pass or affect that a, a, a little bit more. Um, again, when the guard gets there, they should be fronting that, wedging that, and trying to keep it out, out of the high post um, uh, for sure. Right, because that's what that's something that I was kind of thinking about is if the ball goes from the top or from the wing to the high post and then to the wing, does the weak side come all the way over if there's somebody on the strong side, short corner, block area? Okay, go through that scenario again with me. So if the ball goes from the high post to, let's say, the right side wing. Okay. And then they have somebody in the right side block or short corner area. I'm assuming that forward goes over and takes over the wing. Does the weak side come all the yeah, way? Yeah, the weak the side bottom would come help with that. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And our 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 five obviously will try to get to that short corner, but that may be something that we switch up a little bit this year, saying, "Hey, that weak side person, you know, you're seeing it, you're reading it. If it goes from the wing to the short corner, and our five is staying a little bit high, our five is trying to keep it out of that high post for a second, we may try to have that weak side come over." and help us uh, again. I don't think the short corner hurts us nearly as bad as the high post. Right. Okay. Uh, what, what would you say kind of hurts your teams the most? Would it be the three point shot or, or getting layups off this? Yeah. Um, again, I don't love talking about what beats it, but uh, I will say um, it depends on your team a little bit and what you're you got. Last year, we didn't do a good job of the, the high post dump. And okay. so when they get to the high post and then, you know, be able to uh, get it inside out of there. You saw the one clip where we took it away and got a tip, but um, I think that's something we, that's an adjustment we need to work on this year is doing a better job of keeping it out of the high post. And if and it does get there, not letting the ball go inside. Okay. Yep. That's all I got. Thank you. Well, I appreciate the questions, Derek. I will give you guys my cell phone. And if there's anybody else that you talk to that, hey, that we run and have questions, happy to help in any, any way we can. Um, and obviously, Derek talked about the videos that uh, Championship just did a new video that's out. Uh, and I do think that would be helpful if you want to run it. So my cell is 217-649-3100. Uh, yeah, and I started as a high school coach in a small school in Wisconsin and ha had some good coaches reach out to me and help me. So I definitely have a heart for high school coaches and and trying to help you. Uh, your job is difficult, especially today with today's parents and uh, all the fans and things. So if I can help you be good at this and you can help your players enjoy running a defense and getting excited about a defense, then I'd love to help you with that. I don't know. This is Brian. I don't know if I really have a question but i have uh coach devilvis his championship videos yep and he played it ultra aggressive where he is clear out at half court yep and, and then his tried, drive would be at the three-point line most right of the time. and yep. we tried doing that and we were successful early but then until teams started scouting they knew what we were going to do then we just is almost like we we're just running around they knew how to kind of attack it so we played some one one three so i'm definitely interested in that alignment yeah, and I do think that's a good change of pace, uh, especially if you don't have great depth. If your guards get tired and you're trying to pick them up at half court, it, you're good, as you talked about, it's going to be a, a struggle. And I think, you know, for one possession, if you're doing it here or there, you can do that. But if you're doing it for multiple possessions, um, extending that far is, is going to be – you're probably going to have to have really good depth. Yeah, and at the high school level, when you get down to the 7th, 8th, ninth, they're less quicker yeah. and they're less athletic, and it's really hard to do that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I think, I think the one-one will be a a good adjustment for you.
I think that was my big mistake, just trying to go by his video and running it his way. And we didn't, didn't have those athletes to do that. Yeah. And that would be one thing too. If you run it, Hey, and this team, this was hurting us, please reach out. I, that's why I'm giving you my cell, reach out and call. And uh, we probably faced it, you know, faced everything there is to run against it. And, and I, I probably can help you with an adjustment or, you know, think, think about doing this next time. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions, coaches? Okay, well, uh, Coach Ballin, we really appreciate uh, you donating our, your time to uh, District 7 Basketball Coaches Association here in Northwest Ohio. Um, Glad to help. Yeah, and if you have this recording, if you anybody watches it and they have, please feel free to give them myself. Um, yeah, and I know sometimes you feel like, oh, college coaches are busy, but I've got a heart to help people and we could find time to connect um, and help you. So, um, yeah, don't feel free to reach out, give my cell out and happy to help any way I can. Will do. Well, um, Coach, again, thank you so much. Uh, so kind of you. And uh, we'll be pulling for you hard this season. Sounds good. And if you have any good women's basketball players, send them our way. I will pass that message along to the girls coaches in District 7. All right. Sounds good. Thanks Thank again, you. Coach. All right. Appreciate it. Uh-huh. Bye. All right. Have a good night.